Your anatomy is a blueprint. You are an architect. Beneath your skin lie the plans for your fastest, strongest, most powerful self. If you can learn the structure of your skeleton, the makeup of your muscle, and the mechanics of movement, you can create your best possible body. I'm Mike Robertson. This is Built by Science. There's no better way to learn and understand anatomy than to watch a real life human being move. So we brought in WBFF Fitness Pro, Jen Jewell, and I'm gonna show you using Jen's physique exactly where all these muscles are, what they do, and how to target them specifically in your own training. So when we're talking about the abdominals, it's important to note that there are three unique subsections to your abs. We're gonna work our way from the inside out, but you have a deep layer, you have an intermediate layer, and then you have a superficial layer. So the first muscle that we're gonna talk about here today is the diaphragm. A lot of people don't talk about the diaphragm, but it's a critical muscle as far as respiration goes. So what you're gonna imagine here, from the front cut inside of your rib cage, your diaphragm comes up, all the way around, and then it actually attaches onto your lower back. So when you take a deep breath, your diaphragm comes down, and in a perfect world, underneath you, you have your pelvis, and most importantly, your pelvic floor. So that is there to help catch that breath. It'll pressurize that entire abdominal wall. So when you go to squat or deadlift or overhead press, you've got a really strong, stable spine. Also in that deep layer, you have what's called your transverse abdominis. And it runs from what's called your linea alba here on the front, which is just a fancy name for a big attachment point. So it comes all the way around and attaches onto your lower back. So those three muscles work in concert to help pressurize your deep or your inner core musculature. Next, we have that intermediate layer, which is essentially your internal oblique. So everybody's familiar with the external obliques on the outside, but if you could imagine external obliques run this way, your internal obliques run in this fashion. So you can imagine a muscle that runs from, again, that linea alba and comes down and across and attaches to your hip bone. From there, working your way even further outward, you've got your external obliques, runs from your rib cage all the way down, connects to uh, your pelvis and your hip. Most people think of an external oblique as a trunk flexor or a trunk rotator. While that's all fine and dandy, what we're gonna show you guys here today is how important stability or control is through your core and your midsection. So these muscles are actually very important for posteriorly tilting the pelvis or helping it roll back. A lot of people have a tendency to fall into what's called an anterior pelvic tilt. So the pelvis rolls forward, you get a lot of pressure on your back. So these muscles are important for pulling your pelvis back probably the major player that everybody wants to talk about, your rectus abdominis. So your rectus abdominis is this broad muscle that runs from your lower rib cage and your sternum or your breastbone all the way down to the front of your pelvis, which is called your pubic symphysis. So once you guys have a basic idea of the anatomy there, you can start creating or constructing a better workout routine. Last but not least, we're gonna show you guys the muscles on the back side of your anatomy or your posterior core. So I'm gonna have Jen turn around and while there's tons of muscles on the back side of your body, we're gonna focus on three main muscle groups. First, you've got these really small muscles that span about two to four segments of your back or your spine called multifidi. Now you're never gonna see these muscles, but they're important because they help give your spine or your back feedback to your brain as to where it is in space, and they help you control little movements throughout your spine. So you've got your multifidi, you've got a big muscle called your quadratus lumborum, or QL for short. And it actually runs from the top of your hip all the way up to your lower back. It's important as far as side to side motion goes. More importantly, for our purposes, it's really important for preventing side bending. As you're gonna see, the lumbar spine is very important for controlling or resisting motion. Last but not least, you've got these big muscles that everybody knows on the back side. They're called your erector spinae and they run from your sacrum and the top of your hip all the way up, they connect to the back of your rib cage, 
all the way up to the neck and even as high as the base of your skull. So these muscles are really important as far as controlling motion. Again, think about squatting, think about deadlifting where you've got a heavy weight on your back, you wanna maintain a little bit of extension through your lower back. That's where your erector spinae come into play. Now that you understand the muscular anatomy, we're gonna show you guys the exact bones and joints that you're gonna use when you're training your core. There's two major joints we're gonna focus on here today, the pelvis and the lumbar spine or the lower back. So I'm gonna have Jen give us a profile here. When you're talking about your pelvis, there's two major motions. There's what's called anterior tilt, where you're kind of rolling your pelvis forward and popping your hips back. The next is the opposite motion, which is called posterior tilt. And that's where you're kind of rolling your pelvis underneath you. So you got those two at your pelvis, you have four motions through your lower back. The first is what's called lumbar flexion, or just what you do when you bend over and you touch your toes. So you can see how she kind of relax her back. And then the opposite motion is what's called lumbar extension. So in this case, Jen's gonna reach up to the ceiling, arch back, and you can see how all these muscles turn on back here. Last but not least, if you're thinking more side to side motion or rotation, you have what's called side bending. So if she's up nice and tall, she's just gonna bend to one side. This is also called lateral flexion. And then last but not least, you have rotation. So if she's squared up, just rotating to one side or the other. Now as important as all these movements are, what you're gonna find when we're actually coming down to the training is how important actually resisting motion is. The lumbar spine doesn't have a ton of range of motion other than front to back. So if we can teach you guys how to control or resist motion through this area, you're gonna make your lifts bigger, stronger, and you're gonna stay healthier to boot. We've covered the muscles, we've covered the skeleton. Now we're gonna show you guys the exact movements that your core is designed to do. Now, people love talking about big bang exercises like crunches and sit-ups and side bends, all the exercises that a lot of us have grown up with. But what's probably even more important is learning how to control your pelvic position, learning how to control your spine position, because that's what's most important for keeping you healthy and moving weights for a long period of time. So you've got five functions of your abdominals or your core. Number one would be your ability to create pressure through your abdomen and create pressure to stabilize your spine. So if Jen just took a deep breath in and held it, that's your diaphragm pressing down into that pelvic floor. It's pressing out into your transverse abdominis or your TVA. So this is giving her a strong, stable spine so that she can squat, deadlift, and overhead press effectively. The next motion is most people would think of trunk flexion, but instead the true second function would be controlling extension through your lumbar spine or lower back. So if Jen were to arch back, all right, this is fine, but you gotta be able to control it. And a lot of people struggle with that. So this is where you have your rectus abdominis, you have your external obliques, you have your internal obliques. So all those muscles connect to that front side of your pelvis and they help you control your pelvis and your lower back position. Third, you've got what's called side bending or lateral flexion. So if Jen were to side bend to her side, you can see her external obliques, her internal obliques, that big muscle on the back called her QL, those muscles are important for helping her stay neutral. So if you imagine carrying a bag of groceries, one side's really heavy, you need the opposite side to be strong to control that motion. Fourth, you've got what's called anti-rotation. So obviously people spin side to side. If Jen goes side to side, you can get a feel for that motion. But what's really important, you have your rectus abdominis, your internal obliques, your external obliques, and even your TVA. If you remember that deep muscle that runs kind of side to side across your abdomen, all those muscles are important for controlling rotation side to side. Last but not least, the fifth role of your core is the ability to resist flexion. So if Jen went ahead and turned around here for me, the ability to bend over and touch your toes is important. But as you guys can imagine, if you're squatting or deadlifting in this position, it's not gonna end well. You're either gonna end up injured or you're not gonna be able to move as much weight as possible. So the ability to resist flexion or keep yourself from getting rounded over is not only gonna keep you healthier, but it's gonna allow you to squat, deadlift, and overhead press more weight. So far, we've covered the muscular anatomy, 
the skeletal anatomy and the joints involved in your core. And we've also shown you some of the movements. Last but not least, we're gonna show you guys some of our favorite exercises. Now make sure you guys remember, we're just showing you a handful of the exercises here today. There's tons more if you go ahead and check out the full trainer. So the first exercise I'm gonna have Jen demonstrate is what's called a TRX fallout. So Jen's gonna set up on her toes, her hands are gonna be underneath her shoulders, and what I like to cue my clients to do is to exhale just a little bit. And if she does that, you can see her ribs come down, from this position, all she's gonna do, literally allow her hands to fall out in front of her body, keeping her abs nice and tight, and then pull herself back. So when you get out into this position, you're using your rectus abdominis, your internal obliques, your external obliques to help control that motion. And in that bottom position, you're really focused on what's called neutral spine. So a neutral position between her neck, her upper back, and her buttocks. TRX fallout is a fantastic exercise, not only because it's gonna help you sculpt the kind of physique that you're looking for, but it's also gonna create balance front to back. A lot of the clients that I work with are very tight or very stiff through their lower back, and they need a strong set of abs to help offset that. So if you train the TRX fallout, it's gonna help you create that balance front to back to not only keep your back healthy, but allow you to push more weight in the squat, deadlift, and overhead press. Our next exercise is what's called a dead bug. And a lot like the TRX fallout, this is gonna help you learn how to control or resist extension through your lower back. So what I'm gonna have Jen do is go ahead and lay on her back here. She's gonna take her arms and reach up towards the ceiling. She's gonna bring her feet, knees, and hips up to a 90 degree angle. And then something I always like to cue with my clients is to exhale hard. That's gonna allow them to bring their rib cage down and it's gonna allow them to flatten their lower back into the ground. You're gonna hold this position throughout the course of the set. So once you're in this position, Jen's gonna extend and push through one heel. And again, she's really focusing on keeping her back flat throughout the set. The natural tendency is going to be to arch or extend your lower back, and you don't wanna let that happen. So again, ribs down, back flat, and then pushing long or reaching long through the heel. Pal-off press is a fantastic exercise for teaching your body to resist or control rotation side to side. What I'm gonna have Jen do here, she's gonna go ahead and grab our attachment. She's gonna pull to her chest, and then from this position, she's gonna stand up nice and tall and extend the weight out in front of her body. So this is again, the weight is pulling her back. She's gonna work hard to prevent rotation. So she's using her internal obliques, her external obliques, her transverse abdominis, and even her quadratus lumborum. So she's holding this position for 20 to 30 seconds, and then she's gonna do it on the opposite side. Now again, this may not be an exercise you're familiar with, but it's gonna help tie everything together. The stronger you get at all these unique movements and stability exercises, the stronger you're gonna be when it's time to squat, deadlift, or overhead press. The final exercise in our demonstration is called a suitcase deadlift. And this is a great exercise because it's gonna teach you how to control side-to-side -side motions through your core and through your spine. So what we've done here, we've got Jen set up with one dumbbell. She's just gonna pick it up off a bench. A lot of times we'll set people up a little bit higher than usual because it's awkward going all the way down to the ground to pick up a dumbbell with one side. So from this position, what Jen's gonna do, simply shift her weight back, and that weight is naturally gonna allow her to prevent motion side to side. So go ahead and just shift your hips back, Jen. Perfect, chin down just a little bit, and then stand back up. And she can progressively work through more and more range of motion as she gets comfortable. But again, when you have that weight on one side, you're gonna work really hard on the opposite side to make sure you're preventing or resisting motion. So not only is this exercise great, as far as strength building goes, but it's also gonna train a lot of the muscles that you wanna develop anyways, like your external obliques, your internal obliques, and your quadratus lumborum. Look, at the end of the day, your abs are everything. They literally tie your upper and lower bodies together. So whether you're in this for purely physique, focused results, or you just wanna squat, deadlift, or overhead press more weight in the gym, you gotta have a strong, stable midsection to do that. If there's two things I can get you to take away from the video, it's this. Number one, it's not just about moving through your core and your lumbar spine, it's being able to resist motion through that area. 
Number two, again, the physique, I get that. I want you to have a lean sculpted midsection. But if you don't have the stability and the control, front to back, side to side, and through rotation, you're never gonna be able to move as much weight and perform at the level that you would like to in the gym or on the field. With that being said, you guys should have a PhD right now in the abdominals, in the core, and how to use all those muscles in the gym. But make sure you watch all the videos before you get into the gym and get after it. Run Muscular Anatomy. Biomechanics. Mechanics. The skeletal system. Muscle function. And the best exercises to build lean mass. Knowledge, Knowledge is power. power. Know yourself to build yourself. Build yourself with the best. Mind. Muscle. Masterpiece.